Welcome to Cookville First United Methodist Church. My name is Rob Wheeler. I'm the associate pastor here, and I'm so thankful uh, that you've chosen to join us today. Today is our service for December 13th. It is our third Sunday of Advent, and today we are talking about joy. And so we are so joyful, again, that you've joined us today. We want to let you know of a couple of things before we begin our worship service. Uh, first, we always have special worship events during the Advent season, but we've not been able to share in those as we normally would have because of the COVID situation. So we want to let you know that all of our special Advent services are available on our YouTube channel, or they will be. Um, today, I, I mentioned, is, the, is December 13th. Um, beginning tonight at 6 o'clock, our annual Lessons and Carols service will be available. And on Christmas Eve, our Christmas Eve service looks a little bit different around here this year. Um, our church will be open from 4 to 6, where you're welcome to come and pray with you or your family. Um, you can pick up your communion elements then. And then our Christmas Eve service will be available at 6 o'clock on our YouTube channel so that you can share that with whomever you'd like. So we hate that we can't be together, but we are so thankful that we can join together in the ways that we are. Um, another quick reminder, um, you may have, if, you are, if you have been connected with our church, perhaps you're a member here, um, we have sent out our stewardship information. We did that a few, few weeks ago. We are in the middle of planning for 2021, and we are kindly asking and, and a gentle reminder that if you do pl uh, plan to send a pledge in for 2021, um, that you would go ahead and do that so that we can make our business arrangements for the church in the next few weeks. Um, we, start, we don't like to talk about that, but it's certainly necessary for the healthy life of our church. Um, a reminder, uh, just to remind you again, today is the third Sunday of Advent. We are speaking of joy, and as we do that, would you please hear these words? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. So today, may the peace and the joy of Christ be with you.
Today we light three candles. The candles of hope, of peace, and the candle of joy. The third candle reminds us that because of the Lord, we have a reason to be truly joyful. The world around us is filled with surprises and beauty. Our cups overflow with goodness and grace, and we rejoice with the promise of eternal life. Advent is a time to celebrate the joy of living and the joy of relationships. Advent is a time to celebrate the earth we all share, a time to celebrate eternal life. Let us pray. Lord of light, we thank you for the gift of life and for our friends and family. We thank you for providing for our needs and sending a Savior to us. Amen. May joy light the way, joy light the way, joy light the way, now and always. Good morning. And welcome to Cookville First United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Advent. Light of God, illuminate the path that leads us to healing, hope, and salvation. Glory of God, fill this sanctuary and expose the darkness that stalks our souls. Light of God, shine with such brightness that we marvel in awe. Glory of God, fill each temple of the Holy Spirit present today. Light of God, glory of God, we welcome you in this place. Let us worship. to the 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God, in the beginning you spoke all that is into existence and breathed life into the world. You made light in the midst of darkness, and all that you made was good. What a labor of love! The light of the world, through whom all things were created, came into the world, but the world did not recognize him. The sun came to his own people and they rejected him. What a labor of love. You loved until it hurt. When you invite us each by name to draw near to you, to find life in you, we turn away. We cause harm to others and scoff at your sweet grace and mercy each day. You continue to love us, protect us, and we patiently wait as we find our way home to you. What a labor of love. You love us, though it hurts. You give us the opportunity to be called daughters and sons of the Most High God. You call us to believe in the one you sent to us, a reflection of you who reveals your love. Though we constantly reject you and find love hard, though our thoughts and deeds are often evil, you still find ways to care for us and call us your own. What a labor of love. You love us even when we are hurtful. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full grace and truth. What a labor of love. What a labor.
We like to remind you each week that we know there is so much to pray for. Uh, if you would like to share your prayer concerns with the church, please do so. You can email us or call us, and we'll be happy to share your prayer concerns with the church and your pastors will be praying for you. We have been and will continue to do that, and we will certainly pray for any concerns that you might have. So now let us go to God in prayer. Our gracious God, this is a season of anticipation. Each year we step into a season in which we await the coming Savior who comes to us in the form of a baby. And we wait for a day of giving and receiving. We wait for a day of connecting and of love. We wait for this day of peace and joy. And today, God, we think on joy. In this season of waiting, help us remember that we don't have to wait to experience the joy that you promise. We don't have to wait to experience the goodness and the fullness of life that you promise. We don't have to wait to experience a joy everlasting that defines the very nature and expression of our lives. While we wait for the baby, your joy is present with us and we praise you for this good reality. And Lord, we need the joy that you provide us at this moment. In these times of difficulty, we thank you. We need a joy that brings us a new perspective. Joy that defines the way we experience life, not something that brings us into quick moments of pleasure. Help us understand the difference between abiding joy and momentary happiness. The joy that you promise is a state of living that defeats life trouble rather than just merely covers it. Help us find it and help us share it in the ways that we live. And Lord, we, today we do pray for our friends and our family, the people around us who are struggling. We boldly ask for an end to the coronavirus and we pray for physical healing and for a repairing of our weakness. We ask that you heal the division and the resentment that we have toward one another. Help us look beyond our momentary troubles and those issues that we face and rely on your eternal perspective. And we pray for your church and the people in it. Change us and focus us to do your work. May we know of your grace and may we share it with the world around us. And always, we thank you for the gift of joy that we find in your son. He came to seek and to save us, to provide us the ways of a full life. So help us open our hearts to accept it. And it is in his name that we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Blessings to you today.
creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us give our thanks to God. Our gracious God, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift, and may we return a portion of your gifts with joy in our hearts. May our gifts be used to further your kingdom on earth, and may we be used as your instruments of peace, goodwill, and joy to those around us. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.
Today's scripture is found in the first chapter of John, John 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Word became flesh and made His home among us. We have seen His glory, glory like that of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, beloved. Welcome to our worship time together on this third Sunday of Advent. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the beginning of my sophomore year in college. I didn't have enough money for tuition. 
I was also struggling to accept my call to ministry. And I had just broken up with my high school sweetheart, which at the time felt very traumatic. So all of those life events somehow managed to merge into a defining moment. For over a year and a half, I had been praying about a call to ministry, and I told God that if God led the way into ministry, I would follow. So at this particular time, as I was moving toward the beginning of my sophomore year in college, it seemed like there were so many obstacles, even to the point that I was running up against dead ends. So it was very confusing. So it was in that time frame when it happened. That's when what spiritual directors call convergence began to happen for me. That's when God opened a path forward when there seemed to be no way forward. So divine loving action seemed to be unfolding right before me, especially when I was at my wit's end. So in that time frame, in the fall of the year, I accepted my calling from God. I actually sat down and wrote a letter to God, and I accepted my calling. I accepted the end of my high school relationship with my high school sweetheart. I walked through the door of an opportunity for a new major that provided a scholarship. That was my way forward. God was laying out the path before me, and I was making steps forward. So there I was, back in class, enrolled again for my sophomore year of college, and I was, in reality, an unwitting and unlikely English major. I still can't believe that to this day. But that was the path, that was the scholarship, and that was God's way of leading me forward and preparing me for what was to come. So that particular fall, as I enrolled in school again and started classes, I had to take a class on poetry. Poetry. I had never anticipated taking a class on poetry. Um... It was, to describe it, you remember uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, his phrase, girly man. I thought maybe that was like a little bit for a girly man. Uh, It just, my dad didn't understand it, I didn't understand it, but it was part of being an English major. And so I had enrolled in several literature classes, but one was poetry. So that fall, I remember the first day of that class so vividly, poetry class. I was sitting next to this huge window, and full bright beams of sunlight were streaming through that window as though I was sitting in the middle of the sun. I mean, I was just engulfed in sunlight where I was sitting. The professor was speaking from his lecture notes, just routine. He was talking about how literature and poetry are really about the fundamental realities and characteristics and challenges of life. He talked about the challenges of the human journey and how they are reflected in literature and poetry. Joseph Campbell's heroic journey, as he describes it, moving from innocence to experience, which is painful, 
And then through great struggle, through great adversity, even to the defining moment. And once you move through that loop of the story, you emerge as a changed person, wiser, but sadder. And so that's Joseph Campbell's heroic journey. So he was explaining all of that. And then he said something that pierced my sophomore in college heart. It struck home. It rang true. He said, simply said, growing up is painful. He said, what you all are going through is painful. And when he said that, it rang true in that moment for me. He said something then, I I do still remember, and there's more, but he said, the first step of maturity, the first step in maturation is learning that things are not always as they appear. And boy, was I finding that that was true. Things are not always as they appear. So that sentence struck me, but then he talked about the painfulness of realizing that things are not what they appear to be and that growing up, maturation is a painful journey. He quoted a Robert Frost poem. And in that very moment, it stuck in my mind and heart. I memorized it, and maybe I can still say it today. The poem is, Nothing Gold Can Stay. It goes like this. Nature's first green is gold. Her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. As dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. It still lingers in my mind and heart and soul. And that day in poetry class as a sophomore in college, what he was saying began to take on a whole new dimension. He had said that things are not what they appear. Growing up and this life journey is painful. But then the next thing he said was a moment of divine action for me. It was an advent. God was drawing near. And even more than that, God was speaking through this college professor in a poetry class, and he didn't know God was speaking through him, but I certainly perceived it as God speaking directly to me. I'd been struggling with my calling. I didn't have money to enroll in school again. And then convergence started to happen. I was growing up. And so he said, from his lecture notes, he said, the professor said, this is the continual path of life. And here it is. It is a path you must travel. I still have goosebumps. I felt the sensation. I remember the goosebumps. I have them right now. I remember the sunlight streaming through the window and the shiver that ran through my entire body and how attentive I was to the moment, to the advent of God. All the while, 
a professor was simply teaching his class, reading from class notes. But for me, it was a God event. It was a God moment. It was a defining moment. It was God drawing near and speaking. And so on this third Sunday of Advent, let's think about how God draws near. You all know that I read a lot. I probably read too much. But recently I've been reading a series of books by a scholar from Princeton named Dr. Andrew Root. Dr. Root writes about the secular age that we live in today, the characteristic of, characteristics of secularism. And much of his work is based on a modern philosophy, probably the most well-known philosopher in many circles today, Charles Taylor. He talks about how the secular world is a disenchanted world. It's no longer full of God. And so because of the emergence and the prominence of a scientific worldview and a secular worldview and an individualistic worldview, both of these scholars say that most people no longer believe or expect or perceive divine action in our lives. So we live self-contained, mostly self-focused lives of self-indulged autonomy in a secular age. Not really expecting God to speak or to act. So in these weeks of Advent and before, I have been thinking a lot about that. I have actually been praying a lot about that. Do we expect divine action in our lives? How do we watch for it? How do we wait for it? How do we recognize it? And how do we respond to it? If there is such a thing as divine action that we can believe in in our secular age, how does it happen? How do we look for God's story to intersect our story? So Dr. Andrew Root helps us understand how to watch and wait for God these days in a secular age with little or no expectation of divine action. So here's what he says. Now this is in scholar speak, but it's important for us. He says, God comes... God makes God's self known. God performs divine action. Divine action happens as interpersonal speaking events. That's the phrase. Interpersonal speaking events. That's what I experienced not just as a sophomore in college, but before that, during that time frame, and many times afterwards, and even now. God comes to us as interpersonal speaking events. God comes in moments where God speaks into your life, into your story, through a person and or a relationship. God comes as a living word spoken through persons who cross your path. Persons who are in your life. Ordinary words are spoken that become divine living words full of grace 
and truth. That's what changed my life. An advent of God. In her personal speaking events, God speaking into our story with God's larger story in a transformative way. The advent of God, full of grace and truth. So God draws near through a smile and a hello at the food pantry distributions. I've seen it happen. God draws near in whatever ways we worship. In whatever way we are worshiping now, whether in person or online or on the radio or however it comes to you, God is present and God is speaking in and through our story. When Rob prays our pastoral prayers on Sunday morning, I am sitting along with you with my head uh, down and listening, and God speaks grace and truth, and I am with you. God speaks through Christmas cards or a phone call or even email. Yes, God can communicate even through that. I I am going to draw one distinction. God does not speak through social media. I'm going to draw the line there and say that God doesn't speak through social media. God comes through interpersonal speaking events. That's how we recognize God's advent. That's how we recognize God's drawing near. God speaks into our story and transforms it with grace and truth. So divine action unfolds in our lives through relationships, conversation, and shared life. Language that becomes grace and truth. Dr. Root says that biblically it comes in moments of desperation Most powerfully, it comes in moments of desperation when and where there appears to be no way forward. And I've experienced that multiple times in my life. Doesn't it feel like that today? We hope for a way forward through these grim circumstances. And it's painful. It's a painful journey And it's scary, and there's too much fear, too much misery, too much suffering, too many deaths. It is easy to get overwhelmed. But we have to trust that God's continual loving action is unfolding before us. So the good news this morning is that Advent happens. The good news is that God continues to come. That divine action unfolds in our lives and our stories. God comes to us through our stories, through interpersonal speaking events. It happens biblically. Look at the stories. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Hannah, Hagar, Moses, Habakkuk, Jeremiah, Mary, Joseph, the disciples of Jesus, the people along the way that encounter Jesus, Peter, Paul, and countless others. God moments come. Advent happens. And the language of our ordinary lives become extraordinary. It becomes extraordinary as living words of grace and truth. So as this sermon and our worship on this third Sunday of Advent comes to an end, reread our Scripture. Let's reread it. Listen to it closely. While the other Gospels begin the story of Jesus with John the Baptist, 
speaking a prophetic, apocalyptic word. Or they begin with angels speaking to either Mary or Joseph to not be afraid to play their part in God's larger story. John's gospel starts with poetry. John's gospel starts with this soaring poetry, this sacred poetry, and it speaks to the grandeur of God, a, the God who comes near in relationship and sharing and language as a living word, an interpersonal speaking event when we need it most, full of grace and truth. So listen again to John's poetry of divine action, of Advent, even in our lives as Christ is revealed and comes to us. In the beginning was the Word, the wisdom of God. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. And in Him was life, and that life was the light of humanity. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. For the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made its dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, the beloved Son who, became, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. From the fullness of His grace, we have all received one blessing after another. The instruction of God came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only Christ, who is now at the Father's side in eternal sovereignty. Now Christ has made God known. For He is the living Word, full of grace and truth. The poetry, the sacred poetry, of John's Gospel, introducing us to the One who comes. So may we watch, may we wait, may we listen, may we be attentive, may we hear deeply, and may we respond to the poetry of God as God speaks into our life into our story, the life-changing language of grace and truth. Advent. May it be so for us. Even now, when we need it most, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
song. It came a flowered bright amid the cold of winter when spav spent was the night. Isaiah twas foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind to show God's love all right. She bore to men a Savior when half spent was the night. This flower whose fragrance Sweetness fills the air, dispels with glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. True man, yet very God. From sin and death he saves us and lightens every load. Begotten, not created. 
tempted. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. As we draw nearer to Christmas, have an attitude, a stance in your life of expectation. Through faith, expect divine action, God drawing near, the advent of God, full of grace and truth. And so now, may the saving grace and truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest and abide with each and every one of you in your journey, in your story, in your daily living. Amen.